Hey guys, what's up? Uh, it's been a while since I posted a video. Uh, just kind of working on some stuff, not really many ideas on what to do. But I decided what I'll do is uh, I'm going to post uh, a series on uh, how to Trojan a Linux system. Um, so when I say Trojan, I mean I want to show you what crackers or hackers or whatever you want to call them, what they'll do when they, if they actually ever um, penetrate your system. Um, you know how they try to maintain access how, to, how they try to hide from administrators or from you you know whoever runs the system and how they basically try to maintain access and do whatever they want to do with the system um, it's gonna start very easy um, and we'll end up at a little more advanced um, method um, but the, uh, again we'll start easy and the easier it is I mean the more obvious it is the more susceptible it is to being um, found out whereas eventually we'll get a lot more stealthy and more advanced so the first video today I'm going to show you guys a uh, very basic how to Trojan a system binary so for example you know when a hacker gets on your system uh, what they generally want to do is they want to run their their tools um, as a, one, one example we could use that they might want to run as a DDoS client Something like this. No, it's not here. Where did I put that? Uh, I think I'm in here. Yeah. Let's say they want to run something like a DDoS client. Okay. If I look now, whoops. Let's scrap it. Uh, let's see. So there it is running. Now, obviously, if you know you're a good administrator and you're you know you're keeping uh, an eye on your system and you're checking it, the, what's running you know much like you know you with guys with windows backgrounds task manager you check what's running and you know you might google like hey what's this is it is it legit this is obvious it's not legit ddos client you see that you go right away hey you know that's it's obviously malicious you know my system's been hacked not not a good thing so what they want to do is they want to make sure you don't you don't you can't find that. Very very basic. What they might do is they might rename it to something that looks legit. You know maybe you call it something Bash. Maybe you call it you know something to do with Chromium. Uh, you know whatever. But a little more advanced than that, what they might do is actually just backdoor your PS binary, um, so that it actually hides a certain program name. So that even if you're root and you're you're checking a process. Uh, it, this won't show up. So that's the goal today. I'm going to show you how to backdoor the PS binary. Uh, in fact, actually, what we'll do is we're actually going to backdoor the library that the PS program uses, as well as the top program and any other program that accesses your slash proc file system. Now, slash proc file system essentially is a pseudo file system that's used by Linux for process information, and most of your programs that actually, well, all your programs. Um, that read process information are getting all that information from the slash proc file system. If you do a man proc, I'm pretty sure there's a page. Yeah. So the proc file system is pseudo file system which provides interface to kernel data structures. Copy mounted on slash proc. Read only. Uh, yeah, there is some, some slash proc things you can change, some variables. Uh, as you can see down here, what we're interested in slash proc slash pid. A numerical subdirector for each running process. So, you know, let me show you. If I go here, if I do something like cat slash proc slash 427 slash command line, so that's my DDoS client, tells you the command. And actually, you can actually go right into the directory here. There's a whole bunch of information on that process. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, if I look at the exe file, oh, that's the actual image. Actually, you know that I thought that was a DXC name, um, but you know it just tells you a bunch of the the environment. You know, if I check that out, it shows you the actual environment they're running with. Uh, but what you need to know, I mean, the most important thing for us in this case is just the command line, because that's what we're going to try to detect inside the PS library. And when we see this name, uh, we want to hide it. So let me go back to my temp directory. And 
inside PropPS. So I already downloaded the source code. I just got to uncompress it. So here's the source for um, Proc PS. Now what this is is and there's actually a bunch of tools that rely on this. Um, so you'll see you have uh, top. Uh, there's PS. There's PID of uh, PWD. A uh, bunch of different tools, and a lot of them rely on the Proc library built into this, which is the source code in here. Now. Obviously, when you when 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 someone is back during a binary, they've got to look through the code. They've got to understand it to a, you know at least a small degree to know where to put their code. I've already gone through this code, so I know exactly where I want to put my uh, Trojan code. Uh, but I'll sh I just want to show you guys one data structure real quick that I came across that obviously I realized I needed to modify or use. So the proc t structure. This is basic. This is I mean the basic structure as it says there which holds all the information about a process. So we know we want to at some point look into that. Um, and specifically when I look at this data structure, it's pretty big. But uh, down here, there's an important field, the command line. It's a vector, um, command line string vector holding the command line. So we know that the command line slash proc page number command line holds the actual name of our process. So I kind of had an idea, I was interested in finding you know, where that was filled in and to see if I could somehow modify that or somehow alter execution of the program so that it wouldn't return any kind of entry that had a certain name in it. In this case, DDoS client. Now, readproc.c, I mean, obviously you can touch by the name readproc. It's probably going to read the processes. So it made sense to check there first. Again, I know exactly what I'm looking for. So, you know, you're not going to know that. You have to actually look at the source, read a little bit, understand a little bit. But it's not too hard to find out exactly where you want to place your backdoor. I'm um, looking for command line. There's a few of them before I get to what I actually want. Uh, here it is. Now, remember, this is a very quick backdoor. I'm sure there's spots in here that, ha that, that, that may not, maybe, maybe there's a certain switch with PS. It might take a different path and it might, my backdoor may not work. I haven't really tested it thoroughly, um, but I'll show you how it works right now. So this line of code you can see here, it's basically just filling in the command line into our structure. This P uh, pointer is a pointer to that proc T structure which I showed you. And here all it does is basically copy the command line, the path of the command line into that structure which eventually gets reported out through a file called display.c under the PS binary source code. So I'm going to modify this. Uh, something super simple. I'm going to use something called string string. Um, let me show you that real quick. All it does is it finds one string and stack another one. So it finds a needle in a haystack. Um, and upon return, it gives you a pointer to, that, to the substring or returns null. So, all I'm going to do is we want to check uh, p command line. Now it's a vector, it's an array of strings, so we're going to check the very first index into it, and we're going to check for DDoS. I mean, what you can do here, you could, you know, very basic, some hacker, he might name all his tools some special name like hack underscore, and then you can just search for anything called hack underscore, and as long as he ran his, as long as he called his binaries hack underscore, they'd be hidden. In our case, I called it DDoS client, so I'm just going to search for DDoS underscore that would be good enough so I'm saying if if that exists we, now now at this point we know that this is a process we want to hide uh, one thing I noticed too in this uh, function they have a label called next proc right here and they go to that label when they want, when they want, when they want to pass over uh, a process so in here uh, it doesn't exist anymore so they go to next proc so I'm just going to use that I'm going to take advantage of that I'm going to go to next proc and skip over uh, my process, or the hidden proc, the process we want to hide. That's it, two, two lines, again, it's very basic, I don't know, I mean, this back, this Trojan may not work, I, there may be some, some edge cases that I'm missing, 
um, but just for a quick example of what people are doing to your system and how you can maybe detect it, uh, I want to show you this real quick. So let's write it, let's quit out. Um, I got a I got a, uh, we're gonna install it now. I've already written the configure file and scripts and stuff, so it should make pretty quick. Oh, I guess it didn't. Oh, that's right, it didn't. Okay. So this is gonna take a couple minutes, so you might want to fast forward uh, 30 seconds or something in the video to get to the point where it's uh, the build's complete. Sorry about that. So, once this is done, we're going to run make. This will take another minute or so. Shouldn't be too long, maybe 30 seconds more. You can see here it's building the proc library. And again, all those, far, all those binaries, top, PS, uh, you know, they all use the, the, the proc library. So by Trojan that proc command, read proc, we're actually backdooring different binaries like top as well, you know. So we can, it should work with top. I didn't test it, but I believe it, it'll work with top as well. There's our ps command being built. It's built in a ps directory called ps command. So I want to show you again. Now that it's finished building, let's check our DDoS client. It's still running. Docs slash DDoS client. Now if I run the PS command we just built, run the exact same command, if I'm right it shouldn't show it. So it doesn't. So you see the difference there? We're basically now hidden from the, from the administrator. So now, I mean, what a hacker would do is, you know, they would, I'm going to save my old PS, just so I don't have to charge my own system and what they would do is they would move their they, they would install their uh, their backdoor PS command as the PS on your system now when I run PS and grep for DDoS I see nothing and you know if you're not aware of this method and you're not aware that this can happen I'm sure most of you guys are I mean, you know this is an old relatively you know easy method to detect but uh, you know it does happen and now I don't you know now it's gone it's hidden obviously some some things you notice you can you find out right away as soon as you just check some obviously right you check the check some so that's our hack binary and obviously my original binary different check some and I mean a lot of security tools are built on you know MD5 sum or some kind of uh, check sums and basically what they do is they will check some all your system binaries and maybe they'll run once a day or something compare the checksums and it can detect a different checksum and once it detects a different checksum it alerts you lets you know hey there's something going on here this binary's been modified so it's very easy to detect this but how many people do you know like you know friends or what have you that have Linux actually even know what a checksum is or MD5 sum is or you know, run some kind of software that actually alerts them when a binary changes. Um, as far as I know, it's not really built into any kind of Linux, except maybe, maybe OpenWall or something like that that actually, you know, has security built in like that. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Um, there's also a big difference in file size. My original Oops. I don't know why it's such big. They must have the library built in. What is the uh, version? Oh, there's no version of that. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. You see some differences. Uh, Again, really easy to check this, really easy to, to detect this kind of change on your system. But again, people use it still to this day, and most people aren't aware of it. Most people don't know how to detect it. Most people aren't running software to automatically detect it. And you know, that's just one way that people can hide in your system. Now remember, that's just hiding processes. What else people might do is they'll hide themselves 
from you know their network streams, you know, network addresses. So for example, Netstat. If I use Netstat, um, what people might do is they would hide, you know, their address. So they'll go back to the Netstat binary or what or some kind of system call that goes to Netstat, and so any kind of network stream that shows their address, uh, they'll say they'll tell Netstat not to show it. So that way you won't see them online on your system either. You won't see them. Don't you won't see their processes. Nothing. So they're essentially hidden from you. Uh, but again, charging binaries super simple to detect. You know you check your set up a bunch of hashes for all your system binaries, and you know run a tool that, that will compare them daily. Now, so this is very basic. The next video I plan to do is I will show you how to Trojan a system without modifying any binaries. So it's a little better, a little, a little bit uh, harder to detect, especially if you don't know what you're looking for, um, but also has some weaknesses and, you know, still kind of easy to detect. But we'll finish up in, my, in the third episode where I'll show you the stealthiest and hardest to detect, which is I'm going to actually, we're going to uh, develop a kernel module where we actually Trojan the system in kernel space so I mean, we sent you to that point once you're inside the kernel you know game there's nothing you can't do obviously and at that point if you know what you're doing you can hide yourself to the point where you're not going to be found I mean it's still possible but the stealthiest yet most advanced um, and hardest to detect so that's uh, it for this video uh, again I know very basic but eventually we'll get a little more advanced Hopefully some people learn something. You'll definitely learn something in the next video. And for sure you'll learn something in the third video because as I'm writing it, I'm realizing that the Linux kernel has changed quite a bit over the years since I've done this kind of stuff. And I'm actually learning as I go to develop what I need to develop. And so I'm sure some people learn a bunch in that video. Um, so thanks again for watching and uh, have a good day.